After several less than successful attempts to conquer the 3D realm, Sonic the Hedgehog found a comfortable and profitable home on the Nintendo DS in the form of Sonic Rush, a game that more or less harkened back to the glory days of Sega's blue mascot. The series continues now with Sonic Rush Adventure, but can nostalgia carry it to the finish line? Piecing together the storyline of a Sonic game is a bit like trying to decipher an alien language. Narrative has never been Sonic's strong suit, and that trend continues in Sonic Rush Adventure. The story, as told through a series of long and overly wordy text boxes, finds Sonic and his young malformed friend Tails crash landing in the middle of the ocean. In order to get back home, Sonic needs to collect materials from nearby islands so Tails can eventually build a craft powerful enough to get them home. Along the way, Sonic hooks up with some new characters, old friends, including Blaze from Sonic Rush, and the nefarious Captain Whisker, bringing the total number of characters in the Sonic universe up to well over one million. If you're playing a Sonic game for the story, you're simply not right in the head, but that doesn't change the fact that it's 100% fluff. Sonic Rush Adventure builds on some of the better ideas seen in earlier Sonic games. Thankfully, the majority of the game has players zipping along through colorful 2D levels at breakneck speeds. Not content with just defeating enemies and reaching the end of the level, Sonic also has a tension gauge, which he can expend to execute special boost maneuvers. These moves, when performed correctly, help Sonic jump higher or farther and run obscenely fast taking out any bad guys in his path. In order to fill the tension gauge, Sonic must either defeat enemies or perform freestyle tricks. There's actually not much skill involved in doing tricks, you just need to keep tapping the B button while in the air and hit the A button before you land. The biggest difference between Adventure and Sonic Rush is that in order to explore new areas, you need to travel to them first via one of the four different watercrafts that Tails will build for you over the course of the game. This is reminiscent of the latest Zelda game on the DS, where players trace their route on a sea chart and then physically sail to their destination. The key difference here is that while all that charting and sailing in Phantom Hourglass is not only a pleasure but an integral part of the gameplay, in Sonic Rush Adventure, it feels like unnecessary busy work, a side dish that gets in the way of the main course. That's not to say that it's all bad. The speedy jet ski is great fun, allowing you to pull off new tricks while you're zipping along and collecting rings. The sailboat is also interesting in concept, shooting down various enemy ships and obstacles using three different kinds of weapons until you realize that you can generally breeze through the entire thing with only the first weapon. The other two craft have their own quirks, but none are really interesting enough to hold up to repeated play. Rounding it all out is a more extensive multiplayer, which includes time trials, world rankings, and multiplayer race modes. Overall, you're getting a good deal of content compared to your typical handheld action adventure. Each island in the game has two regular stages plus a boss stage. The basic levels are genuinely well designed and conform nicely to what we've come to expect in a quality Sonic game. The two screens on the Nintendo DS are put to good use as Sonic switches effortlessly between them at precisely the moments you would expect. In each level, you can certainly zip along the critical path and get to the end in one piece, more or less. Experienced players will opt to explore each level to find all the hidden paths and areas in the game. Getting to these places requires expert use of the boost abilities and perhaps a run-through with Blaze, the alternate playable character with slightly different abilities. The boss stages are not terribly difficult, but do make good use of both screens as well as the 3D capabilities of the Nintendo DS. But when you finish an island and you're ready to move on, you'll be in for a rude awakening. To reach other islands, Tails needs to build you a craft that can get you there. In order to do that, he needs certain kinds of materials that can only be collected by going back and replaying stages you've already completed. So instead of moving on to bigger and better things, you're often stuck replaying the same few stages just so Tails can get his precious widgets to build the next craft. This is a pointless way of artificially extending the length of the game and serves only to stall any momentum you might be feeling while playing. The more interesting and successful way Sonic Adventure extends the game is with the addition of 100 challenge missions that unlock bonus material in the game. Sonic Rush Adventure is speedy, colorful, and filled with upbeat tunes. 
all these things come off quite well on the DS. It feels a little old school at times, but frankly the old school Sonic games were among the best, so you can count that as a plus. The story elements are bland, uninteresting, and very poorly written. The faster you can page through the mountains of lame dialogue, the better. Sonic Rush Adventure more or less hits all the notes we've come to expect in a good Sonic game. It stays largely in safe, familiar territory, which is not necessarily a bad thing. This tried and true Sonic formula is miles better than the 3D games. In this rare case, we're thankful for the lack of innovation.